As you can imagine, water chemistry is a huge deal in reef aquariums, and there are many methods to help maintain good water quality. Because there's so many options, it can be overwhelming on first glance, and it takes some time to figure out what they all do and what makes sense for your home aquarium. So first, let's take a look at calcium reactors. Right off the bat, it has a scary name, calcium reactor. I need a reactor for my tank? It's actually not that complicated. It's essentially just a chamber that recirculates water and slowly dissolves calcium carbonate media. By slowly reintroducing this water back into the aquarium, a calcium reactor helps maintain calcium and alkalinity levels. These two are major water chemistry parameters for stony corals and other tank inhabitants such as clams. The more stony corals in the reef, the higher their demand for calcium and alkalinity to continue growth, especially fast-growing stony corals such as Acropora. The media is dissolved by slowly injecting carbon dioxide gas into the chamber. Carbon dioxide, when mixed into water, converts into carbonic acid. When the water inside the reactor becomes more acidic, the media starts to break down and release calcium and alkalinity into the water, making it bioavailable to the tank inhabitants. Unfortunately, this process is also happening in the ocean as carbon dioxide levels rise. If you've ever heard of the term ocean acidification, that's really what's being described. The ocean itself is becoming more acidic and it's preventing stony corals from growing, or worse yet, dissolving their skeletons while the coral is still alive. It is part of the reason many of the reefs around the world are struggling or bleaching at all together. The reason I like calcium reactors so much is that they're fairly low maintenance once they're set up, and they do a good job of maintaining calcium and alkalinity without the risk of crazy overdosing if something goes wrong. Usually, if there's a malfunction, the reactor just stops working. It doesn't dump a year's supply of additives into your tank. I said these things were fairly simple, so let's take a look at it piece by piece. Let's start with the chamber itself. Usually, it's a large acrylic tube with a large access port at the top to easily fill and refill media. The top has to be secured down to avoid leaks once the reactor is filled with water and starts recirculating. This one accomplishes this with a large orange O-ring and thumb screws around the entire circumference of the top plate. The media used is aragonite, which is a great source for calcium carbonate. I use a mix of aragonite and old coral skeletons that are laying around. I could just throw them away, but in a kind of a matrix-like way, a calcium reactor can reuse them. Once the reactor is filled, we set the top plate on and screw it down. Make sure that there's no dust and debris on the o-ring or else the reactor might leak. One quick way to tell is the appearance of the o-ring itself. Here it's squished down nicely and doesn't appear to have any air gaps. A calcium reactor requires two pumps a feed pump, and a recirculating pump. Here is an example of a feed pump. A small MaxiJet 1200 or a Cobalt does the trick. It's important to get one strong enough to force water into the reactor while under a little bit of back pressure because as the media dissolves, it turns a little slushy and also the output of the reactor is going to be stopped down to a controlled drip. The pump that does all the heavy lifting is the recirculating pump. That's this yellow guy here. This particular reactor takes water from the top of the unit and it sends it to the bottom of the reactor. The CO2 gets chopped up and diffuses back through the media in a constant loop. The CO2 portion of the system requires a tank and a regulator as well as a needle valve to control the flow of gas to the calcium reactor. It's kind of a hidden cost of the reactor. Often aquarists, they price out the calcium reactor, but fail to account for the CO2 portion. It's usually a few hundred dollars for the tank and regulator, depending on the size of the CO2 tank and the quality of the CO2 regulator and needle valve. The regulators I've seen for the saltwater hobby are fairly inexpensive compared to the very high quality ones used by the freshwater planted tank folks. I've seen some CO2 setups for freshwater that are well into the four figures. In any case, there's a connector for the CO2 here on the reactor that goes into what's called a bubble counter. 
The bubble counter is a quick and easy visual reference for how much CO2 is going into the reactor. I shoot for about one bubble per second, or less in some situations. The real way to determine whether the reactor is working is to test the pH. This particular reactor has a port on the lid for a pH probe, so the acidity of the water can be constantly monitored. I shoot for a pH a little above 7. In my experience, when the pH is lower than 7, the reactor is likely a milkshake. And if it's up there around 8, there's probably no CO2 flow at all, and either the needle valve needs to be tweaked, or the gas tank is empty and needs to be refilled. Finally, the water leaves the reactor and heads back into the system through the effluent line seen here. It's a little counterintuitive to send back low pH water into the system, but this actually helps boost the pH in the aquarium and add buffering stability. When the reactors here are running well, our pH is a rock solid 8.3 and the tanks have steady levels of both calcium and alkalinity. I mentioned earlier that calcium reactors are fairly low maintenance. Our 10 pound CO2 tanks last about 3-4 to four months and when they run out it's a good time to take the reactor apart and clean everything and then top off the media. So in summary, water chemistry is a really big topic and there's a lot of ways to achieve good chemical balance for your corals. Hopefully this video was helpful in understanding one of these technologies. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy reefing everyone.